April and Wayne Show app is now available on Google Play for Android. And donate to help the ministry at aprilandwayneshow.com. People are sitting in church Sunday after Sunday, year after year, and still are not saved because they're listening and believing in ministers who are leading their souls to hell. Jesus explained in the scriptures that those ministers are not going to heaven and they're blocking you from going. It's like the blind leading the blind because the people love their pastors and their churches more than Jesus. Just because a pastor is behind the pulpit doesn't mean that he's preaching from the word of God because they will pervert the word of the living God for their own purpose. That's why the Bible says to try the spirits by the spirits, where they be of God, because there are many false prophets who are gone into the world. Don't listen to preachers, I mean false prophets, who are motivators of prosperity, of self-empowerment, of health and wealth, and teachers of life skills because they say that they're giving you the principles to live by to improve your life. Like most popular preachers and TV ministers on TVN, like Joe Osteen, T.D. Jakes, and Rick Warren. Many ministers are following their teachings instead of the teachings of Jesus Christ because they want to have large churches and large amounts of money at the price of your soul. People need to wake up and realize that their teachings are doctrines of demons to contradict the Bible with half lies and half truths so Satan can get your soul. Their teachings come from the rudiments and wisdom of this world, which is foolishness with God, and is based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. God says, this is not of me, but of this world. And the Bible says that those type of ministers are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world, and the world hears them. The world listens to them, the world believes them, and the world will follow them straight down to hell fire. God says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And they will cry aloud and spare not. Lift up that voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and their sins. Ministers are supposed to warn the sinners to save their souls from hell and warn the righteous not to sin so they won't end up in hell. If they don't, God is going to require their blood at their hands. Preachers of the day are afraid to warn their congregation about their sin and talk about hell because they're afraid that the members, the mothers of the church, the deacon board, the board members, and their money might leave. If a minister is not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he would preach what Jesus preached consistently, not once a year, because God says to teach my word faithfully. They would preach it in season and out of season. They would preach the truth when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it until Jesus comes back. in these last days beware of those who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they want to devour you like wolves they do not care about you they only want your praise directed toward them instead of towards god 1 john 4 to 1 beloved Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 2 Peter 2 to 1 But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Matthew 7:15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 24:24. 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christ, and false prophets, 
and she'll show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Deuteronomy 1820, but the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. 1 Corinthians 14.33, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Jeremiah 23.26, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea. They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. False teachers will tell you what you want to hear. Beware of people who do this because all they want to do is to gain the glory of men. Satan plants these demonic minions so that it can have your soul. Ezekiel 33, 3, 1 KJV, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words. But they will not do them, for with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Ezekiel 34 to KJV son of men, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel, prophecy, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, will be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. One thing about Scripture, it just drops it like a ton of lead right on you. So absolute. Why? I mean, come on, John. Give us a little slack here. Can I love some, some things in the world just a, a little? Why does it... Why does it seem like so often Scripture just... I mean, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Period. You know why? You know why I have to believe that? Because just like with the rest of John, if you come along and you say you know him and you don't keep his commandments, bang! Again. Just boom! Hit you with a ton of lead. You're a liar. Mm. Brethren, the reality is this. It's like Paul Washer said before. If you came in this door right now and you told us you just got hit by an 18-wheeler and you look just like you all look right now, we'd all say you're lying to us. I don't think that's, that's the basic weight of the matter. He's saying, look, when you're born again, and when you're indwelt by the Spirit of God, it is so radical, and it so produces a love for God and a hate for this world, that it is so stark, it is so real, it is so obvious, that is there a battle? Well, yes, there's a battle, because obviously we've got to wage war against these anti-soul forces, one of which is the world that we're not to be conformed to, we're not to love it, and so there is this fight not to do it, but it is so real, and it is so... It, brethren, it isn't the kind of thing where you live your life in love with the world all the time and you're trying to get out the magnifying glass and stare and look and strain and squint to figure out if you're a Christian or not. The truth is, this is so, this is so obvious when it happens to somebody's life. It takes them where they're in this course and it totally spins them around so obviously that, brethren, I've seen it. I've seen this happen to people. The worldliness just starts to fall off one after another. It falls off. And I'll tell you this, people that have supposedly had this amazing, this amazing transformation happen in their life and conversion, and all of a sudden, two, three, four, five years down the road, the worldliness just hasn't fallen off, brethren. They're just, there's no truth to it. Mm -hmm. you, you say, well, you can't say that. You're judging. 
I can say that because God's Word says that. If that person shows by a continuous ongoing lifestyle that they're in love with the world, they do not love God. They are those adulteresses and adulterers that James is dealing with, and they're at enmity with God. Lay it down. Hands down, folks. This is, this is absolute. I mean, this is... Brethren, yes, there's a battle. I don't, I don't doubt that. But this is a battle for life and death. And that's what we're told here. If you really believe that this is all true, if this is indeed... You know, you know what it says over in the... What is it, Revelation 14? It says that when we enter into our rest, our deeds follow us. I'll tell you this, through all eternity, the things you do in this life in the service of Christ are going to follow you there. And yet you're giving yourself to the trivialities and the vanities of this life. Amazing! You know what? You're a professing child of God. You say you believe in eternal rewards. You say there's treasure to be had in heaven. But then you compare yourself with a lost man. And he's outrunning you. He's investing in all his stuff in this life because he believes it's going to bring him pleasure. You say you believe the greatest pleasures are at his right hand in the world to come. And yet by your life you're not proving it. And he's outrunning you in the things, in his objectives, what he wants to accomplish than what you're running in. We speak one way, brethren, and we live another way. And we ought to hang our heads that this world should be outrunning us. Jesus Christ said, I would, you would show yourself in or out, hot or cold. And if you're going to be lukewarm, if you're going to serve me with a half heart, it sickens me, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. He's not speaking to some Turks over there in Izmir, bowing down to their Allah over at the no, he's, talking, he's speaking to a church just like I'm speaking to now. Not to the lost hordes out there. He's speaking to the church. And he's saying, if you're going to try to serve me with a half heart, divided heart, I hate it. It sickens me. Go one way or the other. But get off the middle. And if you're not ready, listen, and I say this as far as membership to this church, if you're not willing to commit to be hot and to commit to go all the way, I'm not saying God may not move you, God may not take you another place, that may happen. But when you come, you need to be committed to serve the living Christ with some heat, with some fervency, with some passion, with some commitment. If you want to play games, there's a lot of other places you can go play games. But we want to do it according to the Word, do we not? And it says, do it with fervency. It says, don't be slothful in this. Zeal matters. Passion matters. Over and over and over and over again in the Bible, we find intensity matters. Zeal matters. Wholeheartedness matters. Don't settle for anything less. Too many lazy Christians, or at least professing lazy Christians. Make no mistake about it. The Lord Christ is calling you to put away your idleness. Put away your slothfulness. All your laziness. All your half-heartedness. Serve Him as a slave with a boiling spirit. That's what we're called to do. Brethren, don't be slothful. Don't be idle. We have too much sloth and sluggardliness and slowness in Christians today. I'm serving the One who died for me. I'm serving the One who gave Himself for me. I'm serving Him who gave Himself up a fragrant offering to His Father on my behalf. Now let that sink in. Beloved, we don't just want to serve Christ. We want to love Christ. We're not like those pagans. Oh, I've got pictures in my mind. Hindus in their yard with their little dollhouse looking altars. Bowing really fast. And also, it's almost like you look at it and it's like that, that, that can be real. That's, that's, we're not like them. We don't serve our Christ like the pagans, all full of fear, all full of terror. Brethren, if, if Christ were to stand here right now, and you know, 
He would speak with authority and yet with compassion. If he spoke in that way and he said, look at my wounds. I've done this for you. What have you done for me? Is this not worth your fervency? 